Hi, this is Charles from Waymo. In this talk, I will introduce our recent effort of outboard perception for autonomous driving. We know that 3D applications such as autonomous driving requires lots of 3D labels for both model development and evaluation. However, labeling 3D data is very costly in both time and money. For example, fully annotating a 20 second sequence can easily take a human annotator several days. To scale up the system, we need more automation. Can we push the limit of machine learning models to generate near human quality auto labels? Is it possible that we can develop some offline or offboard version of perception that is much more powerful than the onboard ones? More broadly, when we think about perception for autonomous driving, most of the attention has been on the onboard use cases, where the perception is running on some onboard hardware in the vehicle, giving real-time results. However, the perception can also be used in many off-board use cases, such as for data mining, for perception model training through teacher-student models, or behavior prediction model training and evaluation, planner evaluation, and even in simulation. For those applications, they may require very different types of perception characteristics compared to the onboard scenario. It makes a lot of sense to actually have another stack of off-board perception to serve those purposes. It may share many modules with the onboard one, but could be more flexible in terms of input data format, problem formulations, and compute latency constraints. Our recent work published in, this, in CVPR last this year is one of the first steps towards building off-board perception with a focus on 3D object detection. Although our work focused on the detection problem, more fine-grained semantic signals and tracking techniques are all very relevant for off-board perception. There are great opportunities for more work along this line. OK, so how can we do better than if we are, than if we are doing it on, on board? Well, most existing 3D detectors only use point clouds from a single frame or a few history frames as their inputs. We notice there is much more information in the sequence data. Different frames capture complementary views of the objects. If we can aggregate the object points across time, as the figure shows, we can get much denser point clouds and more complete geometry. For example, you can see for this mini van from having point cloud of one frame to five frames, 10 frames, and all frames this object is visible in the sequence, the viewpoint is much more complete and we get much more dense point cloud. So how do we leverage those temporal informations? A naive baseline would be using multiple frames as inputs to the existing detectors to use them as multi-frame detectors. Given the known sensor poses, we can easily transform the point clouds from a few history frames to the current frame coordinates. However, doing so gives us quickly diminishing returns as we increase the number of input frames. As the figure in the bottom right shows, as we increase the input frames to the detector from one frame to two frames, four frames, up to 10 frames, we can see the incremental returns of adding more frames um, in terms of improving the 3D average precision is quickly diminishing. Besides, adding more frames it dramatically increases the compute and memory usage. The underlying cause for this inefficiency is that we aggregate information across the entire frames. Some objects may appear in up to 100 frames, while some other may only appear in a few. However, setting a fixed frame contact size cannot adapt to different objects. To address this issue, Instead of aggregating temporal contacts over the entire frames, 
we can aggregate information for each object separately. So this is turning from a frame-centric viewpoint to an object-centric viewpoint, such that we can leverage all sensor data captured for an object. This also opens doors for new algorithm formulations, as we will see shortly. The only downside seems to be that we will need to rely on detectors and trackers to collect object tracks. However, with fast advances in detection models and the tracking techniques as presented in this workshop, we believe this is not going to be a bottleneck. Based on this key observation, we build an off-board 3D detection pipeline as follows. From the point cloud sequence input, we first run an off-board multi-frame detector to localize objects in the scene. Then we can use a multi-object tracker to link detections across frames to form object tracks. Next, we have a unique module to aggregate object points from their tracks across all frames. For static objects, we would have very dense points with a good coverage of different viewpoints. As shown here for this car, we can actually aggregate points from more than 100 frames, which results in a point cloud with more than 80,000 points, which is very dense and have a very complete view of that object. For dynamic objects, we will have its full trajectory with points at every frame. We cannot simply aggregate all the points to the same coordinate because objects are moving and we don't know its motion state. But with the full trajectory, it can still help us to refine the heading more accurately and having more consistent bounding boxes. As shown here, we have a trajectory of a car from more than 190 frames. You can clearly see its trajectory. And by working on this, we can have more consistent boxes as well. We we'll take a divide and conquer approach to process those two types of objects separately, meaning the static one and the dynamic ones. For static ones, we can fully leverage its dense aggregate points. And for dynamic ones, we can leverage its trajectory. We we'll refine the boxes of the object tracks with specialized deep neural networks. The final output are the accurate and consistent 3D bounding boxes of the objects across frames. I want to elaborate a bit more on how we refine object shapes from its track data. For static ones, the aggregated points are naturally aligned. So the key is to select a good coordinate system to work with the point cloud, for which we can use the box coordinate from the highest score frame. So we select the frame where the detector is most confident that and use that detection box as the coordinate system for our uh, neural network for the refinement. Now we have a series of operations, including foreground segmentation to separate the foreground points from the background cutters, and a cascaded way of box regression, where we can regress the bounding box first, and then using the regress the box to renormalize the point cloud into the regress the box coordinate and re-regress the box to have a more accurate bounding box. So the key is here, again, is to select the best initial box for the coordinate system, and then have a cascading way to refine the boxes. For dynamic objects, the object track points are not aligned. So we take a sliding window approach to refine for each frame separately. For given frame T, the inputs are the sequence object points from nearby frames, as shown on the um, top left. So besides the point clouds, we also have the sequence boxes, which can be used to uh, refine the um, box for the current frame as well. Compared to the point clouds, the box sequence can have a larger temporal context, up to, say, 100 frames. Then we have two branches to encode the point features and the box features before merging them. There are many other alternative designs, such as using ICP to align the points before we refine them, 
or using sync flow model to estimate the flow and try to align the points. Or we can have a sequence to sequence model um, to have a sequential out box, bounding box output. Um, we have tried some of them, but it's, it is non trivial to make them work. We think those are very good next directions to try to further improve the object centric auto labeling models. Okay. So this is the summary uh, of the pipeline. And as the pipeline has many similarities to how human label 3D objects, meaning that they first discover where objects are in individual frames, and they try to link objects across frames, and then try to go back, back and forth to refine the trajectory to have consistent and smooth bounding boxes. So because of this similarity, we call our pipeline 3D auto labeling. So instead of human labeling the sequence, we have machines and can label the objects very accurately. Evaluated on the Waymo open data set, which is a data set uh, released by Waymo containing rich sensor data of more than a thousand uh, sequences of 20 seconds each with fully annotated bounding boxes. So evaluated on this data set, we show that our method largely outperforms existing detectors, uh, the onboard one specifically. Um, the plot shows the three average precision at different IOU criteria. So from looking at the figure uh, from left to right in the x-axis, we can see the IOU threshold grows up. And as the threshold grows up, the 3D precision naturally goes down as the criteria is more strict. But we can see our method, the off-board detector method, has, is having a larger advantage when the criteria is more strict compared to the popular detectors compared here, the point pillars one, which is a very fast and efficient detector, and a PVRCN detector, which was the prior state of the art on, the, on many leaderboards. Uh, and here we show more complete evaluation results comparing with more methods. We can show that our uh, proprietary single frame detector called MVF++, multi-view fusion++ model, uh, has already outperformed all prior published methods at the time of publication. And then by adding more input frames to the detector, as well as adding more test time augmentation, like in a similar way of undumbling, we can further improve the detector performance across all metrics. Lastly, more importantly, Having the full 3D auto labeling pipeline, which leverages the powerful offboard detector, as well as the object centric auto labeling, which uses the sequence data to refine the object in the tracks, uh, we can get the best results. Um, for example, for the IOU at 70% for the vehicle 3D AP, it can further improve uh, up to 5 point AP compared to the five frame detector. And the improvement on higher standards, say IOU at 80% is more significant, uh, up to more than eight points improvement compared to the five frame detector. Okay, so we have such great results, but how far are we from human quality? To understand this, we did a human label study on 3D object detection. So we selected a few sequences from the Wemo open dataset and asked three different laborers to independently relabel each sequence from scratch. We see that although humans agree in most cases, as shown in boxes of different colors, there are still inconsistencies among them in both the recall as well as the box alignment. So we can measure the human quality by computing the average precision of human labels and compare those with other labels. So we found that other labels from our pipeline actually have achieved on par results as humans. Looking at the table, the gap at 3D average precision at 70% is just one point from 3D other labels to human labels. And in 3D AP at 80%, the gap is slightly higher, which is mostly due to the height errors. And more interestingly, at bird's eye view AP at 80%, 
Auto labels can even outperform human labels. So this is very exciting. With such high quality, a natural application is semi-supervised learning, where our pipeline can be used to pseudo-label unannotated data to train student models. So we can combine the pseudo-label data and human-label data to have better student model trained. In the low-label regime, using auto labels can largely close the gap between using 10% and 100% human labels. Here in this bar plot, we show that when we train the student model with 10% human label, which still is using a lot of data, like 79 sequences with more than 15,000 frames, the student model achieved a 3D average precision of around 64 points. Well, if the student is trained on the full Wimo open data set training set with 100% human label, then it gets around 71 points. But if we trained off another off-board pipeline on the 10% data, so we are still just using 10% data, then we use the off-board pipeline to auto-label the rest 90% unannotated data to train the student model, we can see the gap can be largely closed. In another word, using three auto-labels in this case can lead to around 10 times data efficiency boost in the low-label regime. Our pipeline can also help the student to better generalize to a new domain in the case of unsupervised domain adaptation. We believe there are many other applications to be buffered. For example, um, in, to be more specific on unsupervised domain adaptation, so we have two domains in this case. Uh, the old domain, which is containing, contain, consisted of mostly sunny weather sequences, uh, in Mountain View, Phoenix, et cetera. And the new domain, which is the Kirkland subset from the OMO open data set, which is from uh, mostly rainy weathers. And evaluation is always on the new domain in these experiments. You can see that if the student model is trained just on the old domain, um, the performance is not that great. The average precision is just below 60 points. But if we can use auto-labels, which is still trained down the old domain, but can auto-label the newer domain um, for the student training, we can significantly increase the student performance by 4.8 points in average precision. This is because the off-board model, which leverages the temporal sequence data, is more robust to the domain shift that can perform really well on the new domain, although it only has seen old domain data. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's look at some visualization results. So this is a city driving scene with many parked cars. We can see those parked cars are really stable and we have very smooth boxes for the moving cars as well. And here is a very busy intersection with lots of pedestrians and turning cars. Look at how accurate the headings are for the cars. Uh, notice there are still some flickering for the pedestrian because tracking uh, dense pedestrian crowds is very challenging. I think that's somewhere we can further improve. And here is a very uh, crowded parking lot, lots of cars. Okay, so besides uh, the application of semi-supervised learning and domain adaptation, another application of our off-board 3D detection pipeline is for behavior prediction. We know that behavior prediction or motion forecasting is now a very new frontier of autonomous driving research. And both its training and evaluation depend on perception. So to let us to focus the study of the behavior prediction problem, instead of worrying too much about perception noises, we can leverage the off-board 3D object detection pipeline to help construct data sets um, to train behavior prediction models. So we introduced this WIMO 
open motion data set, we, which is a paper also we published in this ICCV this year, um, consisting of more than 100,000 sequences of off-board perception annotated uh, bounding boxes with road graphs. And there's also associated challenge with it and with leaderboard. So you are welcome to take a deeper look at the, tape, uh, at the paper and the challenge um, following the uh, keyword motion data set. And here I want to show you some examples, uh, example clips from the data set where you can see the road graph uh, and the um, bounding boxes annotated using the offboard detection pipeline with IDs and object types. Yeah. And here's another one. Here is an interesting uh, interaction happening where the autonomous driving car um, is passing by another agent which is trying to turn right and the vehicle is waiting for the autonomous driving car to pass, to turn right. Okay, is that again? Okay, to summarize, in this talk, we have introduced the off-board perception problem and an off-board 3D object detector using point cloud sequences. The object-centric formulation to leverage very long horizon uh, temporal context is key to our success, achieving close to human detection quality. And we, also, we have also shown many applications of such off-board perception system. Uh, there could be many such applications such as assisted human labeling, semi-supervised learning, unsupervised domain adaptation, or using those to create large-scale motion forecasting data sets. So although this work has been focusing on the detection problem, we we'll foresee that in the future, there could be many other off-board perception um, formulations for tasks like tracking, semantic segmentation, or other models in, in, inside the perception stack. And that's it for the talk. Thank you very much for listening. So welcome any questions and comments. Thank you.